not a round of applause for Theresa. It's pretty fun. You show the speech. On the elections, it's the decision by asking whether it's a selection or election. But for the main issue here, you submitted aligning with our own position in the IAMT that government has no business in business, especially <coughs> aggression. That has always been our time. Anyway, we still have another person, a friend of the house, Professor Anthony Kila, who has been eminently introduced. Let's hear your thoughts, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. President, ART, or the presidency of ART, you know, you have a president and two vice presidents. Maybe we should talk of the presidency of the ART. Um, distinguished members, and um, I see, uh, I was going to say friends, I see an old friend coming in. That is, uh, let me introduce Mr. Ali Peters myself. Looking late. <laughs> uh, it's only this kind of gathering that will bring um, people like this together. Um, old friends and new, um, as usual, very happy to be here. The, the, the theme and the idea of today's event comes a lot from the title of the event itself. It talks about aviation beyond 2023. Why 2023? Obviously because elections are coming on. Significance of election, which, as Professor Johnson has pointed out in the peculiar Nigerian survey, we're forced to ask ourselves, is it going to be a proper election or selection? I totally agree with it. But the key point is this, we have that date, 2023. What does it mean? A moment of renewal. Technically, it's a moment in which we think we could reset things, you know. A new contract to say, moving forward, how do we want it to be? And that's, it's important we hold on to that idea. Whilst we're at February 23, I've been asking my students lately, what is more important to you in February 23? Is it the 14th or the 25th? <coughs> if you soon know who you are, the way you answer that question this year, a peculiar year in which February matters a lot. So here we are asking ourselves beyond 2023, what's going to happen to aviation? What does that mean? Let's open that question first. What it means is that ART is trying to set an agenda to say, after they've gotten into power in 2023, you know, which is what is expected, elections happen on 25th, third in will happen in May. ART is saying, after that, what is going to happen? What is the new aviation? And it is important we hold on firmly to that idea of platform because in reality, platforms like these is where you discuss not just political, but technical issues as well. So ideally, if we want more than governance, what we should be getting is those that want to govern, to be engaging with platforms like this one, because this is where you meet the operators, investors, the real stakeholders, practitioners sitting together to say not what, and this is important, not what is ideal, not what is desired, but also what is real, because they are in that industry, they're doing it. So it's not a list of wishes you will get in round tables like this. And allow me at this point to truly encourage those who are running for office to engage with platforms like this as much as possible. Luckily, I'm not very worried, you know. It's better if they're present, but luckily, the records are most times more important than presence. So the idea that the vision industry through the ART is making a platform like this available is a very commendable thing and I commend the leadership and membership of ART for this kind of step. I have argued elsewhere that there ought to be a corporate manifesto for governance in Nigeria in which those who are not just stakeholders in Nigeria but are actually shareholders in Nigeria should firmly influence the trajectory of the nation. Because really, you know, everybody is a citizen and things like that, but if you're a citizen, you invest your dream, your money, and you pay not just your personal tax, you pay your company tax, and you pay for the people you create job and world, I think you deserve a peculiar place in the planning of things. I don't know how popular that view is, but I strongly believe so, and I think 
history collaborates that uh, corroborates that point. So it's something we ought to uh, take importantly. So here we are today talking about innovation and a possible new government. Actually, not impossible, definitely new, because unless something extraordinary happens, this administration is on its way out. It is always good to see where we're coming from before we decide where we're going to. And it's important to notice that where we are today, in terms of what we desire and what we're afraid of, has not changed a lot from what we are eight years ago. If we, if, you know, we have to be factored about that. That we haven't seen a quantum leap in aviation in the past eight years. Whether it's a fault, whether it's an accident, whether it's luck, it, that is the why. The what is that if you look at it. And I'm going to give three factors to juxtapose to see where we are for us to arrive there. There are three major components, major three players in aviation. Operators, regulators, and consumers. It is my view that we should start everything. I'm very consumer-centric. For business, it's consumer. For government, it's citizen. That's C. To be consumer citizen centric allows us to see aviation through the eyes of those that use it. And those that use it should be the one dictating the trend for which those who operate and those who regulate will then adjust. With the view of making things easier, better, and safer is a keyword in aviation for the users of the aviation. So a consumer centric view is that view that allows every other player to be affected, to be influenced by the needs, requirements, wishes, and constraints of the consumer. So what is it that the consumer wants? Safe, affordable, flexible, punctual flights. I argue that that has not been massively improved. Safety, I think we've done well. But I cannot pinpoint a quantum leap that governmental intervention has done to make that happen. I think it does a sort of minimal, gradual, marginal progression of things just going that way. One thing that was, for some people, dreaded or hoped for was a national airline. I've argued elsewhere that the concept of the national airline that was done in Nigeria was conceived in PowerPoint, presented in PDF, and died on Twitter. <laughs> and, and that is a key thing to understand where we're going. The fact that when I say present on PowerPoint is that you know PowerPoint, you can do anything you like. Those of you who are head of the department, they always bring this presentation to me. Everybody just writes whatever they want, any kind of dream, because they can just put figure, copy and paste and put it there. Then, they presented the PDF. Why? Because they've not consulted people. The people in the industry were not aware of what was going on. It was just announced. There was no impute. And after a big show somewhere in England, then after some big announcement somewhere in Nigeria, up to today, the thing is not there. When eventually, when it was announced that the airline was there, and I think they had how many aircraft, I can't remember. Somebody called me, and my comment was that the elephant has given back to an ant. <laughs> After all that, that is just what came out of it. And that tells you that the management of aviation, as Professor Johnson has noted from the public sector, has not done well. But just, it really doesn't matter whether you like or loathe those who are there. It's fact. And we have to learn not to be allergic to the truth. No matter how cruel, no matter how bad, no matter how lovely, we must learn to live with fact. Fact is, this is where we are. We haven't done a lot in it yet. So moving forward, we then have to reset, see what we've done well, which some things are there because they, there's some infrastructural improvement, it must be said. Some airports have been you know, rebuilt, although there were errors in you know, that what that was done. It's very tough to be pro-government in Nigeria. I don't know how people do it. Because the moment you want to see something good, you see another bad thing there. So I think 
We should just mind our business. That is the conclusion I have got into because this thing. So here we are, some improvement there, but there is some problem there. But overall, this is a time for us to rethink it. And here's the thing. I argue that those who are in the industries, operators, investors, and those who are working in it, need to take charge. I am very happy that some people went to court. Not because I like litigation. I'm, I'm, I'm a jurist, not a lawyer, so I don't really make money from, from litigation. But the idea that people understand that if we disagree, we must get somebody else to hear our voice. I think it's a very good thing. And I think those who are operating, those who are investing, should not leave the ground to politicians who just decide. You need to keep breathing on their neck, keep engaging them, keep inviting them. If they like, don't come. Write more letters. Call me here. I know how to write this kind of petition. Write more. Keep writing them every day to show them what they're doing when it's wrong and if it's right, you can praise them for it. So, in research and aviation beyond 2023, this is now my own personal take. No more facts. So far, it's been chronicle of where we are. So, this is what you can call the killer view, if you want. <laughs> I believe that because of the size of Nigeria, because of the structure of governance, because of the way things are going in the world, I believe that beyond 2023, a good Minister of Aviation, a good presidency, should declare aviation sector essential infrastructure. It's a total change of mindset. There is a general view in the country to think that aviation is for the elites, it's for the few who can fly. But in reality, because of the size of the country, because too many things are still centralized, you still have to go to Abuja, because business is not happening across the world, because aviation itself can drive business and growth, I argue that we should declare it just as essential as power or water. And once we do that, it now means that we change the way we engage with the industry. It now means that we know that airports must work, flights must be there, and that it should be, I argue, because that's the world we are, a 24-hour service. Let us fly people in the day, cargo at night. Let our airports go beyond just flying. Let it be a place of experience. Let people go to the airport not to fly, but to eat and shop, and maybe spa as well. To do that, aviation people are more concerned about safety, which I agree. I do not touch that. I argue that moving forward beyond 2023, we need to add another lecture, which is finance. To understand that part of the problem you have in aviation is actually finance in it. Bankers are not very eager because of the peculiar kind of market. Maybe the aviation people have argued that's why I repeat today, should go and fund their own aviation bank with all the risk involved. An aviation bank that understands aviation, that serves aviation, but then sees beyond aviation itself so that all the auxiliary services around the vision can then benefit and contribute from such a bank. That is around the way uh, we should be looking. The presence of government in aviation, and now we go to the other side of regulators. It is my view that government should merely regulate. I, I do not believe, and, and you know, and, and I say that I come from a proud tradition of WT of Nigerian Airways. But, by the way, let me say something about Nigerian Airways. Much as they've tried to kill it, there's a, a symbol, they eventually brought it down. Uh, I think on the way to Tafavalua Square, that office. They, they, that, that sign refused to die. <laughs> Every time I drive, I don't say, wow. I have, um, Dr. Lowe knows the man, we had a friend friend who told us once that, wow. I saw an Italian. The Italian guy, yeah, Nicholas, I can't remember his name. Yeah, you know, he was, he was telling me in Italian, come and meet a fat, go look at you, not in fire, but it's a fat of Well, you know, he was saying to me that it takes a lot to kill Nigerian Airways, and you guys were able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a prize. And you did that. It's, it takes something. I think the experience 
of WT for could have been done better, but again, fact, this is where we are. The experience shows us that government should stay away in investing in innovation. What government should do is to, through fiscal and monetary policies, create an avenue that will allow investors to float airlines. We need more airlines, we need more airports. By the way, the new airports that they're building, you know, good luck to contractors, I consult with some of them. Let me tell you today that some of those airports are going to fail. But some will succeed. It's just management. And I argue that what should be happening is that, just like they're doing football teams, the airports should be shopping managers to say, if you've done well in this airport, be, come and try this one for us. Let's see if you can bring that magic. Is it you or the airport itself? That is the kind of idea. So you start the airport with one idea, perhaps, and you go to something else. So that is ongoing. I argue that, therefore, the government should just continue to create, well, I say continue, maybe it should start, to create an environment where the private sector that understands profit and loss. And here is the thing, while that is allowed though, I expect the regulators to be very strict. To be very strict not because they want to wield power unnecessarily or make life difficult for others unnecessarily, but because, and we'll go back to where we started from, they're consumer centric. In, and now let's put these pieces together, in a worldview with a mindset that A, sees aviation as an essential infrastructure, that B, it is consumer centric, it would then become obvious that what matters is the flights should be there, they should be available, they should be affordable. With this kind of mindset, one of the things that the new aviation ministry minister and presidency should be thinking of is to find a way in which if you get to the airport and you've missed your flight, use that ticket to go on the next flight possible. A call Nigeria flight. I make it simple for readers and those who are not in the sector. The same way when you have your card, your debit card, you go to a machine, whether it's your bank or not your bank, the machine works, you go there, get the money. Maybe you pay some charges sometimes, maybe sometimes you don't. It's not difficult to do that. It's just a political will. They tell me some airlines might not pay other money. Let's start, let some people move. I argue that if some airlines do not go, the ones that are participating, it will be a plus for them to advertise that you can always fly with our ticket. You know what that means? Very soon, airlines will not be selling flights, they'll be selling tickets. Because once you have a ticket, you can fly with any airline. So if you want the quantum leap innovation, that's the kind of thing we need to be thinking. Now, these thoughts, unless members of the ART decide to go and join politics, politicians do not think this way. Because these are technical things that can only come from you if you are in that industry. It is not enough to even be a part of the industry for you to be able to think this way and have this quantum leap. You need to have not only be flying the business of airlines itself, maybe agency, relating with agency, and also relating with the distribution of flights, the GDS, a good understanding Aviation is a very technical, expensive sector that cannot be led, that cannot be managed, led by people who have general idea. It is a sector that it is those who are inside it that will bring the idea, and what the politicians need to do is to see if it conflicts with the constitution or not. What they need to know is, does it make life better for our consumers and our citizens? Does it create job and wealth? But that is not going to happen by itself. And here I close. It is the duty of those who are in the industry to insist that their voice must be heard. Thank you very much. I think we can move it on. Uh, I am not a professor, and I'm not going to pretend to be one. Uh, but uh, I'll break the crap uh, to remind you of some of the salient points he made, uh, which of course further reinforced 
the position ART has always been canvassing. Let me start with the last. They want to get time. We had a session on co-sharing and interlining. I'm sure many of you here I will recall. It was to make it easy, the consumer self-pick thing without compromising standards. They emphasize the role of regulators. We stand for that too. When we advocated that government has no business in business, we never said lay off regulation. Mm -mm. Our vision is international, it's global, and you cannot create your own timing or standard safety or security. It is the same everywhere. The consumer should have their confidence that in addition to comfort, he is safe and secured. There are so many other ones.